Okay, sa git lang na naglo-loko yung internet ko. Okay. So last week pinag-usapan natin yung general structure of nucleic acids, diba? Yung different portions of nucleic acids. We also talked about the how nucleic acid is created from the DNA to RNA up to the protein level. So today we're also going to discuss no that information flow. Uh, the DNA code is an information kasi. And the different sequence of different nucleotides is an information transcribed and translated into a protein through mRNAs, tRNAs, and rRNAs. So today, today we're going to discuss further. No, we'll we'll talk about it in details. Yung topic na yon on transcription and translation, and also we're going to to discuss about a gene therapy, about mutations about recombinant DNAs about genetic engineerings no, and other pa na things regarding this uh, about DNA. Okay, but before we proceed on our topic, let me ask all of you a question. So here is my question. If ever that you're going to cook something, for example, a spaghetti, a fried chicken, Caldereta, adobo, sinigang, ano? kung ano man yan, nalulutoin ninyo. What will be your basis in cooking? And how is food uh, being cooked? Who cooks the food? Uh, what will be your basis? Yan, so paki-answer. Paki-chat na lang, no? Please, paki-message na lang dito sa atin. Sa Zoom. And if ever you're going to cook, you know, anything, anything that you're going to cook, what will be your basis in cooking and how that food is being cooked? Okay, thank you, uh, Justin uh, and uh, Angela Cada. Thank you, Joseph Francis. Ayan, nice answer. Okay, Sheena. Tama rin na may sinabi mo, ano? May magic sarap. Hindi, <laughs> magic ano pala sabi ni Paula. Magic recipe. May kasamang pagmamahal. Totoo ba yan? Panagluluto talaga, may kasamang pagmamahal dapat. Uh, cook with love ba yan? Uh, huh. Backhug. What's backhug? Ayun, nakatali ko. Tapos may nag-hug sa iyo pa na kukok pa. Wow, sweet naman. Sana. Sana all. <laughs> uh, cookies using uh, baking and uh, dry heat. Okay. Sige. Hugasan muna. Oh, tama din naman. No? Ano mo hugasan mo muna? Okay, so... Of course, no, what... Ang basis, do, the basis for cooking is a recipe. Diba? Yan naman talaga yung kailangan. Kailangan may recipe. Uh, you should have a recipe. So, saan man ang galing yung recipe, di ba? Even it comes from the internet or from a, from a book. Kalimbawa, book sa bahay ninyo. Kaya recipe from from your parents, from your grandparents. No? You need that to cook something that is, we can say that, a good food. Di ba? And of course, there is a process in cooking. Diba? Sabi niya dito ay... Uh, sabi ng iba dito is, ayun, kailangan ng heat. Kailangan ng tamang temperature. Uh, dry heat. Um, kailangan palungbutin ng meat. Cook with love. And temperature, change in color, taste, uh, true heat. So, cooking is a process, di ba? It is a process. So, sabi nga... If, for example, if you're going to create a spaghetti, you need first a recipe. Okay? So, hindi naman limited yan for a recipe book. You need a recipe for that. But you need uh, uh, you need to search in Google. Uh, kaya kung mayroon na si, si nanay, mayroon na si tatay na recipe ninyo, yun, pwede nyo na gamitin. And after that, syempre, hindi naman, di ba, it will not be a food if there is no book or there's no chef 
O kahit hindi ka chef, no? kahit na ikaw lang maguluto, wala ka. Walang kwenta, di ba? Walang silbi yung recipe. No? Uh, senseless. No, yung recipe if there is no one that will that will create, no? that will assemble the different uh, different uh, mga ingredients, di ba? Sabi nyo, you need to wash, you need to wash the the ingredients, you need to prepare the ingredients. Of course, you cannot do that without a chef, a cook, or someone, no, a, a human, for example, that will create it. To finally create the spaghetti. So, ano ba tong pinagsasabi ni Sir? So, these things, parang gayto yung nangyayari in our DNA. So, let's consider as the recipe or the recipe book as our DNA. And for us to create the protein that is intended for us, for example, um, uh, the skin we have, the eyes we have, no, it will depend, of course, on the on the mRNAs, the ba? tRNAs and rRNA. So yung mga RNAs natin, it, it acts like a chef. Kapag nagluluto, di ba? Babasahin ni chef, no? The chef will read the recipe. He will copy it in his mind, like the mRNA, di ba? The mRNA carries the code. So like the brain of the chef. He, he memorizes the recipe. After that, he assembles, di ba? He gathers the different portions of a meal. Kung ba, spaghetti, you need to have a tomato, pasta, cheese, o kung ano pa yung gagamitin niyo for that. Diba, kukunin niya ni chef. Si chef ang kukuha niyan. Si chef din ang ah, mag assemble of that different na ah, mga ingredients to finally come up with the spaghetti. So ganyan, no? Basically that is how DNA is being transcripted and translated to produce the protein that we have. So this is the central dogma of molecular biology. The DNA has the informations. Okay? It has the informations that is needed to create the protein. How the DNA is being copied by the mRNA or it undergoes a process of transcription no? from the DNA to mRNA. That is transcription. After that, the mRNA together with tRNA and the ribosomal RNA will create the final protein in the process of excuse me, translation. So our DNA contains different gene segments. And those gene segments correspond to a certain protein in our body. Okay? So that is the central dogma of molecular biology. DNA, RNA to protein. Not RNA to DNA to protein. Okay? DNA, DNA, DNA has the code and it will be transcribed by the RNAs specifically the mRNA, then it will be translated into a protein. Our protein contains different amino acids, right? And those amino acids are, are based on the code or in the information in our genes that is in the DNA. So here is a diagram of the information flow. So our DNA contains our information as humans. Okay, so different species, different human, the different uh, different characteristics of humans is based on the DNA, the nucleotide sequence of the DNA. It will be transcribed by the RNA to create the final protein through translation. So how how it is done? So merong iba't ibang step tayo, di ba? Transcription and translation. What are the difference or what is the difference of the two? When you say transcription, it is the transferring of information from the DNA to Naglulok ang internet, saglit lang ha. Ayan, okay na. So the transcription is the transfer of information from the DNA to mRNA. 
Okay, M ha, M RNA. Di ba yung mRNA, mRNA natin? Yan yung nagke-carry ng code. So during transcription, an mRNA template is being created. Kumbaga, it is a photocopy of a portion of the DNA. So this is needed. Yeah po, nagluloko yung internet dito. Ano? Pero okay naman na sa akin. Okay. So where does transcription occurs? The transcription occurs, of course, in the nucleus. Okay. So the DNA, uh, the nucleus contains the DNA, di ba? Ayan. So the nucleus contains the DNA, correct? So the DNA, ah, sorry, the DNA is contained in the nucleus and the MR, mRNA copies it. So mRNA carries out the DNA outside, no, outside the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Yes, meron naman tayong ano, ano, recorded discussion, Celine. Okay. Balik tayo. Okay, wait lang. No? May nag-chat kayong mga classmates. Paglit lang ah. Ayusin ko lang internet. Okay naman yung signal ko. Naka 6 Mbps naman ako. Oh, okay, product trade. Pero 4.27 naman ang aking uh, speed, internet speed. Okay, let's proceed. So, patayin ko na lang mo ni camera ka, no? Para dun sa iba na nagkakaroon ng problem in their connection. Uh, don't worry, I'll upload din naman of the discussion today, no? Okay, so transcription occurs through DNA and mRNA. There is a transfer of information between them. After that is the translation. So what is translation naman? Translation is the conversion of that information into amino acid. So the mRNA serves as the template. It is the copy. May ta, naglulokor ulit ang internet. Ah, 
Okay. So it is the copy of our DNA. It contains codon, di ba? It has different nucleotide uh, sequence and that nucleotide sequence corresponds to amino acids. So during translation, amino acid will be attached to each other to create the protein that is needed by that by that particular na code or gene code na. Yeah, natin, no? So transcription. Paano ba yan nagaga, nagaganap? So trans, transcription is also called an RNA synthesis, particularly the mRNA synthesis. So the mRNA synthesis is the template diba, for the transfer of information from, from the DNA up to the protein. So si mRNA yung pinagbabasihang template of tRNA and rRNA to create the protein in that particular na DNA sequence. So how it is done? The first step is the DNA unwinds. Okay, nag-unwind siya. Pero hindi siya replication ha. This is transcription. So the DNA unwinds. Okay, it unwinds. After that, magiging exposed na, di ba? Exposed na yung DNA natin. No? Because of that, after that, the DNA, the mRNA will be formed, will pair with the 3-5 strand. I please remember this. 3-5 strand. Okay? DNA strand, ha? Huh? This strand, the kulay yung color blue natin. Yung kulay blue. 3-5 strand, yung kinokopya ni mRNA. The 3-5 strand is being copied by mRNA. That's why our mRNA has a 5-3 strand. Kasi it should be complementary with each other. It should be anti-parallel with each other. Hindi pwedeng pareha sila na 3-5. So 5-3 for the RNA and 3-5 for the DNA. So the mRNA will copy okay, that segment of our DNA it will form a template. Ayan. mRNA forms a template of that particular DNA code. Okay? Then after that, the DNA will connect again with each other, will form again the double helix. Meanwhile, a synthesized mRNA is created. So this synthesized mRNA will be used further for the translation of that code into protein. So imagine, no, merong chef, halimbawa. For example, there is a chef. What he'll do is, he'll read the recipe. Diba yung recipe is the DNA? No, yan yung ating DNA, yung recipe. So what the chef will do is, he'll read the recipe to copy it in his mind. Okay, so... Di ba para mabasa niya yung recipe, kailangan niyang buksan. No? He needs to open the recipe book for, for the chef to read the DNA or the recipe book. So ganun din with DNA. The DNA should be open. The, the helix should be unwind so that the mRNA will, can copy or can create a template of that strand, the 3-5 strand of our DNA. After that, the chef will now copy in his brain the recipe. Okay? For the case of mRNA, the mRNA is already created, no? separate from the DNA. Natin. So that is how transcription occurs. So here is the detailed process for transcription. First is we need to unwind. Right? We need to unwind our DNA. This is not a replication. Ha? This, this is not a replication. Kasi sa replication, di ba nag unwind din tayo. But here, you, we also need to unwind the RNA, the DNA rather, through the use of RNA polymerase. Okay? RNA polymerase. So yan yung nag-open, yan yung nagbubukas ng double helix for the transcription process. 
Okay, transcription na, hindi replication. Transcription process. So the DNA double helix unwinds. And then, the, the RNA or mRNA is being created. How? By pairing with the DNA, with the 3, 5 strand, ito, 3 to 5 direction strand of the DNA. Magpe-pair yung ating RNA. So ribonucleotides are parts of the RNA. So continuous yan, na magdudugtong-dugtong or magko-connect into sequence the ribonucleotides to create the, 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 the RNA template or mRNA template. So that mRNA template will disconnect after the reaction. Okay, after, the uh, after the reaction of that, after it is created, then the newly synthesized mRNA strand moves away from the DNA. The DNA will again rewind, will again close, will again form its double helix. Then this process is how mRNA template is created. Okay, so this is the synthesis of RNA. So the synthesis for tRNA and RNA is also somewhat similar no, for, for, the, for, for this transcription process. Tignan ko lang internet ko. Ah. Okay naman. 10 Mbps. Okay. So if ever that you're going to cook a spaghetti, so here are some of the recipe, no? Mare merong kulang dyan. There are some something missing in this recipe. But the question is, what parts, no? what portions will not be used for cooking? Sa mga recipe na nandito. Yung pa nagluto ka, lahat naman to nasa ingredient mo. Right? All of these are in your ingredients uh, when you're cooking. Well, if you will cook spaghetti, diba? lahat yan. But there are parts of here, parts here that you will not use. Sige nga, what? What parts? So, ayun, tama, Paula, no? Correct? O, sa dulo niya, lagyan naman ng cheese pang nagluto ng ano, pag Pilipino, <laughs> Pilipino style. Garlic ay kadalasan pag Italian kasi ay nagigisa din o nagsosote. So there are spaghettis na nagsosote pa rin. Jim Rod, correct. Tama. <laughs> tama yung sagot natin. Uh, Paolo May, yes, tama. Correct. Uh, tomato, ginagamit din naman yun sa spaghetti. No? Sa, sa Pilipino, mas, di masyado sa Pilipino style spaghetti. Yes. Ayun, correct, Jim Red. Diba? Tama. Tama, Jim Red. So, if ever na you're going to cook something, hindi naman lahat gagamitin mo. For example, ito, yung bawang, the garlic. Diba? Nasa recipe yan. O, nagsusutay kasi, no? O, pag Pilipino style spaghetti, parang wala. May, nag may nagsusutay pa rin naman akong kakilala. Sinusutay nila yung carrots. Pero, meron kong part na hindi gagamitin. Diba? You're not going to use the the peel, the garlic peel. Yung stock, hindi mo yan gagamitin. Pero, meron ka nakalagay in the recipe na, na garlic. Diba? Pero, tatanggalin mo tong portions na yan. Sa so, tomato, nung ginagamit din naman, uh, uh, pag spaghetti ay hindi Filipino style. Uh, kasi naka, ano tayo, tomato sa na tayo. Eh, diba? Pero, hindi mo gagamitin tong tangkay. Diba? Alisin mo yung tangkay. You will remove no, the stock of our tomato if you're going to cook a spaghetti. Yung Eden cheese. For example, yung nalagyan, yung box. Yes, the packaging of the cheese. You also remove the packaging of the cheese. You also remove the packaging of the pasta. Okay? So in our DNA, there are also portion that it is in the DNA it is not transcribed into the mRNA. Okay, merong portion 
na ganyan sa DNA natin. So that portion is we call that as introns. No, introns. So introns, eto, introns does not represent any Okay, any amino acid code. Ibig sabihin, it is not used for creation of protein. The introns. Ano yung ginagamit natin? The exons. So there are exons and introns in our DNA. Okay? Uh, so in prokaryotes, prokaryotes are single-celled organism. Diba walang real nucleus? There's no real, real nucleus for prokaryotes, right? <laughs> may buhok minsan. Ano na yan? Mutation na yan tawag dyan. No? Pag may nasamang mali. <laughs> uh, may buhok minsan. So mutation na yan. Na discuss natin yung mutation. <laughs> so in prokaryotes, they, they contain no, they have no real nucleus, right? And it does not contain a nuclear membrane like in eukaryotes. So for prokaryotes uh, or prokaryotic organisms, the transcription to translation of, of a particular protein is done immediately. Ayan. It, is, ano, it is fast relative to eukaryotes. Kasi nga, exposed na agad sa cytoplasm yung DNA nila. Okay? It's, kasi wala, ayan, no nuclear membrane separating the DNA from the cytoplasm. That is why prokaryotes, transcription and translation is done immediately. But for eukaryotes, no, it's the other way because the eukaryotes also contains a nucleus, di ba? a real nucleus. Second, there is an intron and exons. So, ganyan yung pagkakrate ng DNA natin. It has introns, it has exons. Again, ha, I will repeat, exons. Okay, the exons are gene segments that contain codes for the amino acid and protein synthesis. Introns, it does not contain a particular amino acid or protein code. So, tinanong ko kayo kanina, di ba, dito? Ano yung mga hindi gagamitin? Di ba, sa final product mo, dapat wala kang makikita nito. Di ba, wala kang makikita ang stock of the tomato. Sa final spaghetti mo, wala kang makikita ang box of cheese. Wala kang makikita ang packaging. Ano? It should not have a packaging of pasta in your final outcome, no? yung, yung spaghetti mo. So, ganun din in, in uh, ganun din with DNA. There are some portion of it that is not being coded to create a protein. So, that is introns. So, initially, these introns and exons are uh, combined. No? combined. They are combined together in the DNA. After transcription in the RNA, they are still combined. Okay? And we call that as heterogeneous nuclear RNA. Or simply H and RNA. Okay? H and RNA. After that, that H and RNA will be cut out, spliced out, then connected again without, uh, without the introns. The introns will be removed and then you will create the final mRNA. Okay? So the reason why we call HNRNA as heterogeneous because it contains both exon and introns. Okay? But it will be cut out. It will be spliced. Then the exons will be connected together to create the final mRNA. Because the introns, again, does not represent any amino acid code or protein code. Okay? So, mRNA na yung final natin gagamitin as our template for the creation of a particular na protein. So, our genetic code, again, diba, is based on the nucleotides in our DNA. 
So our DNA contains, correct? Contains different codons. A codon is a three nucleotide, three nucleotide combination that represents a particular amino acid. So in 1961, a person named Marshall Nirenberg and his team, they concluded, they observed, they investigated, they studied, and they confirmed that our DNA has the base sequence. Uh, the base sequence in our DNA is the reason why amino acid sequence is created in our proteins. Okay, si Marshall Nirenberg. Ngayon, alam naman na natin, di ba? Na-discuss na natin yan. That the protein, its amino acid, is represented, uh, represented by each of the different codons. A codon is a triplet, right? A triplet code, different combination of, of alanine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. So... Codon is found in mRNA. Wag yung uh, wag yung kakalimutan yun na. So this is the codon chart. Ayan. So this yung assignment natin last time, right? And actually, marami naman sa inyo ang naka perfect for the assignment. May ilan lang na mga nalito on the instruction, no? So for those na nalito on the instruction, sige. Nakita ko naman na alam nyo magbasa ng codon chart. Tinignan ko yung mga logs ninyo. Yun nga lang, di nyo nasunod yung instruction. No? So, I will allow you take it again up hanggang 12 midnight. Okay? So, last ko na to ha, na <laughs> pag-alaw. Kasi sabi ko, di ba, sa inyo, as I've mentioned uh, in, your, in our previous classes, that uh, during midterm, syempre, mas magiging stricter na tayo pagating sa deadlines. Okay, so this is the last time. I hope I next time we follow the instruction given and we follow the deadline. Okay, so midterm naman na. I hope you already adjusted and adapted dun sa inyo mga subjects. Okay, so this is the genetic code or the codon chart. May I ask if you can still remember what is the starting codon? Uh, what is the starting code? Wow, ang bilis. Ang bilis namang sumagot ni Paula. What is the starting codon? Sige nga. Codon, eh. Cod starting codon. Ayan. Correct, Ninya. Correct, uh, Jika Cabrera. Ocam Mr. Ocampo, correct. Uh, correct naman, Paula. No? May sumobra ka lang na nilagay. Okay. Correct, Maisel. Correct, Sarah. So, natandaan pa naman. Ayan. So, huwag niyong kakalimutan. No? Please, uh, don't, don't forget. Don't forget the starting codon kasi hindi na kayo masisiro sa exam no? <laughs> kapag meron niya. Kasi laging tinatanong naman yan, yung starting codon. So, the starting codon is AUG. So when I ask a starting codon, you will answer the codon. Okay, the, the code. The three let the three letter code. Now based on the nucleot uh, nucleotides, okay? Or I should say the nitrogenous bases, no? So AUG is the correct answer as the starting codon. Kapag tinanong kayo, when you are asked about the starting amino acid, doon nyo isasagot yung methionine. So, different yung codon with amino acid, ha? So, when, we, when I ask codon, you will answer AUG or the different combinations. When I ask amino acid, you will answer methionine. So, I hope you can still remember how to read the codon chart. As I've mentioned in our previous meeting, I will not uh, I will not force you to memorize this codon chart because I will provide this in your examination. 
<laughs> okay lang, Paula. No? Tama naman yung pagka-recall natin. So, dapat alam nyo, no? you should know how to read this codon chart because the codon chart will be provided in your exam. I, I, I suggested it. I propose that it should be added in, the, in your exam kasi even us, no? mayabang na lang ang magkasabi na kabisado niya to ang codon chart na to. Mayabang na lang magkasabi niyan. <laughs> Hindi ko yung kabisado. So, this is present in your examination naman. Uh, sab, uh, nirequest ko na i-print mismo dun sa exam ninyo. Okay? So, for example, uh, let's see kung alam nyo pang magbasa ng codon chart. For example, hanap tayo. This one. ASP. Itong nasa taas na ASP. What is the codon for ASP? Yeah, pakichat. The codon, the three codon for our ASP. Yeah, correct, Jim Red. Correct, Paula. Correct, Ashley. Ayon, tanda pa. That's good. So, wag yung kakalimutan yan hanggang sa dulo ha, hanggang sa midterm natin. Okay, so paano? Paano yan? Sa mga nakalimot na. So G. Kasi nandito sa, sa G. Diba? So G. Then A. Ayun. Kasi nasa A siya nakatapat. And then U. Okay? Kaya G, A, U. For our uh, ASP or dito yan. ASP is aspartate. Ah, sige, try pa nga natin. Uh -huh. Let's try this one. Sistine. Okay, yung pangalawa. Sistine. So what is the codon? The genetic code for sistine. Yung pangalawang pangalawa, no? Ayan. Good, good. Ayan. Naalala na. Marami na nakalala kung paano siya. It's good. Ay, so, huwag niyo kakalimutan. Please lang. Kasi na ilang items din yan sa exam ninyo. Okay. So, paano? U. Ayan. U. G. C. 16. No? U. G. T. Okay. So, our amino acid, as you can see, maraming combinations. Diba? Ang daming combinations. So, halimbawa, the glycine. Glycine has four codon combinations. Leucine has six. Right? And serine has four. Ito pa yung dalawa. Six din. Arginine also contains six. But there are two that contain only one codon, which is tryptophan and methionine. Ay, tigisa lang yan. One lang for methionine and tryptophan. Then we also have codons that does not represent any amino acid. It does not represent any amino acid and we call that as a termination codon or stop codon. So ito yung tatlo na yan. Okay, so this three is the stop codon. So, our genetic code, these codons are almost, sabi dyan, almost universal. So, anong ibig nating sabihin dyan? What do we mean by universal? It simply means that the genetic code, no, for example, if a pig creates an insulin in his body, a human creates an insulin in his body, there's a possibility Actually, there it is. No, it is really the same lang, same code sila. Okay, same yung DNA code for that. So all organism, fish, birds, cat, dogs, humans, plants, viruses, bacteria, follows these genetic codes. AUG will always create methionine. Okay. AUG will always create methionine. Tryptophan will also is also coded as 
UGG. Kahit saan pa yan. No? Kahit saan species yan. Kahit saan phylum pa yan. Pare-parehas lang yung gene code. Okay. For that particular amino acid or protein. Sabi dyan, almost universal with minor exemptions. No, minor lang na exemptions. Pero almost universal. So kaya pwede, halimbawa, gene ng isang halaman, no, gene of a plant, you can put it in a gene of an animal. And vice versa. For example, if you can still remember in your discussion in ISTAS, I think it is discussed in ISTAS, that you can add a protein, for example, in fish. A protein in fish that causes it to, that prevents, rather, that prevents it from freezing. So, merong ganun. Ayan, GMO. Correct, Jayka. So, there are GMOs, di ba? So, in stats na discuss yan, na merong fish, there are fish that contains a protein that has a anti-freeze property. So, what they did is, they looked for the code of that particular protein and they inserted it to a to the DNA of strawberries to prevent the frost no, or freezing of strawberries. So that is how. No? Ibig sabihin, kahit pahalaman, even if, if, even if it is the DNA comes from plant, uh, in animals rather, and it is transferred to plants, pwede pa rin siya mag-generate of that particular protein. So in reality, sa totoo lang, pwede tayong makapag-create ng superhumans. Oh, totoo yan. No? Kasi nga, halos universal yung pagkakakod na yan. Oh, universal kasi yan. For example, another example of a GMO, yung rice. There are rice varieties that is being created right now that it creates vitamin A. Uh, vitamin A, right? Uh, vitamin A, yes. Vitamin A. So it's not normal for rice to create a vitamin A. No? A large quantity of vitamin A in its uh, fruits. But they added a certain protein, a protein code, a protein DNA to the DNA of that particular experiment. So they created... Uh, the, the golden rice, the yellow rice that contains rich amount of vitamin A. Diba? So, that's why GMO is being created because of that reason. Because these DNA codes are universal. AUG will represent a metayunin in bacteria, in plants, in animals, in humans, in fish, in birds. Kahit saan. Okay? And these amino acids, sabi dyan, is degenerate. Okay, mamaya talakay natin ano ba yung degenerate na yan. So I, I, I already mentioned this, diba, this, ano, this information. Excuse me. So if you're going to count the table, the codon chart table, it actually contains 64 combinations of codon. Okay, 64. But only 61 is used for amino acid coding and there is there are no, there are three codons that signals to the that signals the coding of protein to stop so in tatlo na to yon sana tayo these three UAA UAG and UGA for chain initiation we only have one the AUG and for chain termination, we have three. The UAA, UAG, and UGA. Okay, so again, codons are three letter, okay, three letter codes. Yeah, GCA, then AGC, AUG, lagging tatlo. The code is degenerate. When we say degenerate, it means it can contain more than one code. So, for example nga natin, ito, phenylalanine, it, it contains two code. 
Rec, glycine contains 4. Serine contains 6. So it's a degenerate. Ibig sabihin, marami siyang pwede mag-represent sa kanya. Pero, precise. The code is precise. Okay? So kahit pa si Serine, may UCU, UCC, UCA, UCG, AGU, and AGC, it will always create the amino acid na serine. This is universal. Therefore, it will be created in most, no? if not all, organism. The UCU will create serine in all of the organism. UUU will be translated as phenylalanine in all organism, not only for humans. Okay? So let's now proceed on the translation and protein synthesis. So during translation, the first step is the initiation of the polypeptide chain. What does it mean? It simply means the, the code is started to create the protein. So paano siya nag-start, di ba? Ayan, mga sinagot nyo kanina, the AUG codon. So AUG codon, okay? is the methionine. So, dyan nag start yung ating protein synthesis in AUG. Saan? In the peptidyl site. Okay? So, ito yung P site. Meron pang isang site later, i-discuss ko. The P site, ayan. So, dito muna yan. Then, after that, this mRNA, the AUG, will signal the tRNA Okay, yung tRNA natin, tRNA natin contains a complementary base for AUG. Yan, UAC. So this portion, uh, this AUG will signal okay, the attachment of methionine. Okay, so for eukaryotes, we use methionine as our starting amino acid. For prokaryotes, we, they use n formil methionine. It is still methionine. There is a slight difference, but it is still methionine. Okay? So this is the difference between them. And the resulting complex, this one, is the initiation complex. Okay? This is the initiation complex. So hindi naman po pwede na tapos na dyan. Diba? I-start pa lang yan. Nag-uumpisa pa lang tayo. So, this sequence coming from the mRNA, mahaba yan. It is long. Therefore, the protein that will be created is also long. Okay? So, we need to elongate the chain. Okay? The elongation of the chain. That is the, chain. That is the step 2 of our translation and protein synthesis process. After after the initiation step, after creating the initiation complex, okay? In the A site, so yung P site natin is the one in in the right in the left side, one in the right is the A site. Okay? So ano mangyayari? The A site will signal again the tRNA to, to to transfer an amino acid to transfer that amino acid and then it will be connected to the first no to the previous amino acid through the use of an enzyme called peptidyl transferase after that in the p site the T, the tRNA will now disconnect uh, it will be disconnected with the methionine that is it is connected with. So we call that tRNA as MT tRNA because it does not contain anymore the amino acid. Kasi nag start na tayo na mag-produce of our protein. So during production of protein, natatanggal yung mga tRNA natin. So after that, ayun. Umalis na nga. Ah, wait lang. Nag-loading lang, no? Saglit.
Ayan, okay na internet ko ulit. So, after that, marirremove. Okay, the, T, the tRNA will be removed. And the mRNA, kung makapansin nyo dito, nagbo-move siya. It moves, di ba? Nagbo-move siya. Kasi, continuous yung attachment. No? Continuous yung attachment. So, this portion, the blue portion, it is actually the, the ribosome. No? Ito yung ribosome natin. This, uh, this kulay, itong kulay blue, yung mukhang naka, nakabukas na foundation. <laughs> Or perlas no para nakabukas na perlas so continuous yan the mrna will pass through continuously in our ribosome connecting no connecting the different amino acid that is brought by by our trna that is signaled by the mrna template so continuous yan until we encounter the stop codon. So, either sa mga to. Because this codon does not represent any amino acid, ano mangyayari? The, the synthesis of the polypeptide will stop. Okay? Magtutuloy-tuloy yung ating protein synthesis unless may encounter na niya yung stop codon. Again, why? Because it does not contain any amino acid. So, this is the termination step of our protein synthesis. So after that, the ribosome can again synthesize another protein molecule. Okay? So una, syempre, isa pa lang yan. Diba? Isa pa lang metayonin natin. So amino acid pa lang siya. Then continuously, based on the DNA code, uh, mRNA code rather, from the DNA, unti-unti, humahaba na yung parang bulati natin dyan. No? It will be elongated na. Until such time, makomplete na natin our whole protein. So, the translation of protein synthesis ends with these stop codons. Again, sana alam nyo to by heart, the UAG, uh, UAA, and the uh, UGA. Okay, so dyan na siya mag stop So, these codons are also called nonsense codons. Okay, nonsense. Bakit? Kasi it does not, again, represent any code for amino acid. Nonsense or termination codon. So our translation and protein synthesis does not occur at only one ribosome. It, it also occurs sometimes on many ribosome kaya nga poly ribosome okay so sabay-sabay nangyayari yung creation na yan so nagpa-pass through our mRNA template dun sa ribosome then the tRNA will 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 connect with our mRNA will carry the amino acid signaled by our mRNA then our rRNA in the ribosome will uh, will create our protein, one by one, step by step. So, questions regarding the translations of RNA to protein? So, kung walang question, proceed tayo with mutations. So, halimbawa, you cook something, uh, you cook a leche flan, Ayan. O kaya, a gelatin. Diba? You created a gelatin. Accidentally, instead of putting a sugar, diba? Na, ang nailagay mo is salt. No? You, you place salt in it. So, different, di ba, yung kalalabasan? Diba? Uh, different yung kalalabasan nung uh, food mo. Diba? Different. Iba yon, Iba yung lasa nun. Masama. <laughs> Magpaparang, isa, magpaparang scrambled egg yung leche flan mo kapag ganyan ginawa. So, ganyan nangyayari sa mutations. Nagkakaroon ng pagkakamali in the recipe. Okay? So, the tendency is different protein yung makikreate natin. Tandaan nyo that nucleotides or codons are designated, di ba, by, the, for example, 
uh, AUG, this is methionine. If in case this is incorrectly, no, incorrectly copied or replicated, naging uh, GUA. Diba? So iba na yung code. Different protein na yung mapoproduce of our of our synthesis, right? So, ganun kahalaga yan. Okay? Pero, hindi may iwasan minsan yung mutations in our DNA. So, there are incorrect bases sequence sometimes in our DNA. On the average, ito siya, oh, one out of every 10 raised to 10 bases are copied incorrectly. Okay? One out of 10 raised to 10. Um, konti lang pala, no? Konti lang naman. One out, of, one out of every 10 raised to 10. But if you can still recall our discussion on protein, by the sickle cell anemia, it is caused by the... Inter ah, nagloko na naman ang internet ko. For a while, ah. Ayusin ko lang internet ko. Nagulo ko na naman. Ayan, okay na. Aha, medyo mabagal yung upload ko. No? Anyway, okay, proceed tayo. So, 1 out of 10 raised to 10. If you can still remember the discussion on sickle cell anemia in proteins. Diba ano lang yun? 1, no? there is an interchange between valine and glutamate. Only one amino acid, right? One amino acid. So our uh, our hemoglobin contains 150, 300, 150 times 2, 300, 1,200. If I remember it correctly, 1,200 amino acid. Okay. 150, 150, ah, mali, mali. 150 times 2 plus 150 times 2 is 600. Around 600, yung hemoglobin natin. It contains 600 amino acids. Therefore, it, co it contains also how many nucleotides? 1,800. No? 1,800 nucleotides. So, in that nucleotide combinations, only three is incorrectly. Diba? Incorrect yung valine and, tingnan nga natin, yung valine and glutamate. Balik tayo. Valine and glutamate. Where is valine? Okay, ito yung valine. The glutamate is... Asan ka glutamate? Eto. Ayan. So, di ba doon sa discussion natin on sickle cell is napalitan si glutamate ng valine. Ba? Napalitan siya. If you look at the codes of valine and, uh, and glutamate, kung titingnan nito, itong GUA, Diba? And GAA, they're almost the same. Ang pinagkaiba lang is the letter U. Diba? Letter U lang. So possibly, dun sa mga may sickle cell anemia, it's a possibility that this U is replaced by A. By adenine. That's why, instead of uh, glutamine, valine is created in their hemoglobin. So, kaya sila nagkakaroon ng sakit. Okay? So, ganun kahalaga na tama yung DNA code natin. Kasi it can cause, di ba? Uh, uh, 
harmful repercussions kapag mali yung nakaod sa atin. So there are some factors that can affect the mutations during replications of DNA. Uh, X-rays, gamma rays, UV rays, and other na mga radiations. Diba? Kaya sabi na nakaka-cancer yung mga radiations because it penetrates, no? it destroys the DNA. Ganon katindi yung mga radiations. And there are also chemicals that that causes uh, mutations. So diba sa mga pelikula, in movies, mga superheroes, they are mu called mutants. So in reality, if ever you're going to mutate, it's not good no, for your body. Hindi ka magiging superhero if you're exposed to different traditions. Okay? Hindi ka magiging Incredible Hulk. Most probably, you'll have a cancer because of the mutations through these different na mga environmental factors. So, mutations ay not always naman na it's, it's bad. Okay? Hindi naman laging bad ang mutations. No? Uh, because mutations also happens naturally. It is sometimes called evolution. It is sometimes called adaptation. Diba? For example, in the regions of Middle East, in Africa, Kadalasan is mas dark, diba? darker yung pigments nila relative dun sa mga malamig na lugar. For example, sa Europe, sa Europe, Russia, in United States, no? some portions of the United States, in Canada, in Greenland, kadalasan mapuputi. Kasi dun sa mga countries na laging exposed sa araw, they need more pigments. So through adaptation, that their DNA excuse me, mutated. No, doon sa mga countries na malalamig nung nag-migrate sila papunta doon because they don't need that much of pigment naman na. Ay, kaya unti-unti nawala na yung protein that creates that particular pigment. But then again, please remember that this happens million years. Ayan. These adaptations happen millions of years. Hindi yan mangyayari ng nine months lang. For example, ay parayas kayong tisay, tisoy. No, maputi. Parayas kayong ang complexion of your skin is uh, white, no? We can say that it is white. For example, both the parent, no, both the father and the mother has a white skin. Tapos nanganak ng very dark na skin. Okay? Halimbawa, ganun nangyari. So, hindi yan uncommon. No? Uncommon ang ganyan mangyari na outright, bigla na lang. Diba? So, magtaka-taka na tayo pag ganun. No? So, some DNA mutations is beneficial, but most of the mutations that occur in the body can be harmful. Okay? Sa mutations na nangyari sa atin. For example nga, yung sa sickle cell, sickle cell anemia. And yung mga cancers. Okay. So, let's now proceed to recombinant DNA. Ayan, konting slides na lang. Matapos na tayo. Uh, recombinant DNA. So, recombinant DNA is application of molecular biology and genetic engineering through our knowledge in DNA and its replication. <laughs> oh, tama ka naman doon, Ralph, no? Oh, hindi rin ako naniniwala ang mutation niyan pag biglang dark. <laughs> oh, oh, kaya ano, impossible. <laughs> okay, so proceed na tayo sa recombinant DNA. So recombinant DNA, ito yung ginagamit normally to produce yung mga hormones, mga vaccines. Okay? Kasi Di ba nga, universal. Universal yung DNAs. The codes, the codons are universal. It will always produce that particular proteins. That particular amino acids. Ibig sabihin, our DNA can be inserted to a DNA of a bacteria. 
For example, yung insulin. So, insulin is created by this process, by recombinant DNA. So, paano? Hahanapin yung DNA code for insulin. Diba, insulin contains different amino acid. So, that particular na amino acid, it, it is represented by its codon, which is from the DNA code, diba? From the information of the DNA. So, that particular, hahanapin yung DNA na yon the portion of the gene that signals our our mRNA, our tRNA to create the insulin. Ahanapin yun, for example, sa human. Then, ilalagay siya sa bacteria. Okay, ilalagay sa bacteria. So, yung bacteria ngayon, meron na siyang capacity to create that particular hormone or enzyme because of that addition. Okay, so later, papakita ko sa inyo kung paano ba yung process na yan. So, bakit bacteria? Because bacteria replicates, di ba? It replicates fast. So, mas madami tayong, kaya nang replication ng fast, mabilis yung pag-replicate, mas madaming bacteria makikreate, nakakapag-produce ka ng mas maraming insulin, kung insulin yung gagawin natin. So here are some of the substances that is produced by this process of recombinant DNA. The human insulin, human growth hormones, vaccines, yung ating Moderna and ating uh, Moderna, Pfizer, alam ko recombinant DNA na yung process na ginagawa nila. Not the traditional creation of vaccine. Diba the traditional creation of vaccine is the activation of the bacteria or the virus, then it will be uh, added to create an antibody. So here, the recombinant uh, DNA is applied to create different vaccines. So ito papakita ko sa inyo kung paano. No? Uh, but before that, hindi kasi ganun kadali. No? It's not easy to break down the DNA of bacteria. Okay? It's not easy for us to cleave yung mga bacteria na yan. Because it contains a different structure of nucleotides. For example, for the cytosine. The cytosine for bacteria is a methyl, 5-methyl cytosine. No? Unlike sa humans, na cytosine na lang kaagad. For guanine, it is 1-methyl guanine. So it contains this portion, no? yung kulay blue. Okay, ganyan yung mga bacteria natin. So, this methylated DNA prevents okay, prevents the introduction or the intrusion of a foreign DNA in that bacteria. So, what, what we do is to add a restriction enzyme to open up our or the DNA of our of our bacteria. Okay? So, paano yung nangyayari? Paano ginagawa how does the uh, restriction X enzymes opens the DNA of bacteria? So this restriction enzymes look for looks for palindrome. Familiar kayo with the word uh, palindrome? If you have watched the extraordinary Wu Yung Wu. Napanood nyo ba yun? Napanood nyo ba? Have you watched? Extraordinary Wu Yung Wu. Ayan. Diba, lagi niyang sinasabi doon that Wu Yung Wu is a palindrome like like uh, kayak. Diba? Kayak. Radar. Radar. Rotor. So, do, these are palindromes. Because, umpisahan mo sa left, umpisahan mo sa right, parehas pa rin yung basa mo dyan. Kayak pa din yung basa mo dyan. Radar, umpisa mo sa left, umpisa mo sa right, radar pa rin ang basa mo. Same with rotor. O, si Wu yung Wu, di ba? Pag binasa mo, Wu yung Wu, sabi niya. Pag binasa mo pabaliktad, Wu yung Wu pa din. Kaya sabi niya, is palindrome daw yung name niya. So ganyan yung restriction enzymes. It looks for palindromes. Okay? Nahanap niya yung palindromes. So for example, this is a gene code. 
palindromes yan. Bakit? O C, C, G, C, G, G. Dito naman sa kabila. C, C, G, C, G, G. Diba? Ito naman. G, G, A, T, C, C. G, G, A, T, C, C. So the restriction enzyme looks for this, no? Looks for this palindromes. Diyan niya ibe-break. Diyan niya puputulin yung DNA of the bacteria. Okay? So puputulin yan. So kung dito ka magpuputol in this portion, kailangan putulin din yung restriction enzyme on that counterpart portion of the palindrome. If ever dito ka naman magpuputol, dito ka naman magpuputol no? dun sa symmetrical ng palindrome natin. Okay? Hindi pwedeng dito mo puputulin and then dito mo puputulin. Okay? Mali yun. So same locations dapat in the palindrome. So puputulin yan during, uh, during exposure to restriction enzymes. Then i-coconnect din siya ulit. Kasi pag nailagay niya natin yung ating, yung ating uh, recombinant DNA. So it will be again connected with DNA ligase. So saan, di ba? Where? Where in the portion of bacteria will this DNA be connected? So this DNA is not connected to the bacterial DNA. Di ba walang nucleus yung ating bacteria? Pero meron siyang DNA for its replication. Yung bacterial DNA niya. So hindi yan. Hindi dyan co-connect yung ating DNA na idadagdag. I-co-connect natin yan sa plasmids. Okay? So bacteria contains two portion that contains DNA. The bacterial DNA and the plasmids. So yung plasmids, it contains different na mga nucleotides and nasa cytoplasm din yan ng bacteria natin. So ano ang use niyan? It is a vector, ayan, DNA carrier, no? yung, ating vec yung ating plasmid. Yan yung nagsisilbi as a vector or DNA carrier kasi accessory yan. No? Accessory yan ng ating bacteria. So in our bacteria, di ba, the bacteria creates toxins. The bacteria also has the capacity to inactivate the antibiotics. Di ba, kaya nga merong mga bacteria na sila ay resistant to a certain antibiotic. Kasi meron siyang kakayanan na to stop or to inactivate the antibiotics. So our bacteria contains a bacterial DNA and the plasmid. So yung plasmid, it contains ayan, the genes for the inactivation of antibiotics and production of toxins. So dito sa plasmid natin, ilalagay yung recombinant DNA natin. Diyan natin siya ilalagay. Okay? So yung bacteria kasi natin, pag nag-replicate naman yan, if it will replicate, okay, the plasmid will also be replicated. Since bacteria has no, no nuclear membrane, the protein, okay, the protein in that plasmid, for example, the insulin, the insulin protein code will be replicated as well when the, the, when the bacteria replicates. Kaya marami na tayo mapoproduce na insulin. So, paano? No? How is the process of recombinant DNA occurs? First, we expose the plasmid in Restriction enzyme. That restriction enzyme will cut. Diba? Will, will cleave. No? Will cleave the palindrome. It will look for a palindrome in the plasmid. After that, mapuputol na. Ma-open up na yung DNA of that particular na bacteria. And we call that portion that has no nucleotide partner as sticky ends. Okay, sticky ends yung tawag natin. Bakit? Kasi dyan natin i-stick yung DNA segment na interested tayo coming from humans. Okay? Ayan. So ganito yung nangyayari dyan. So this plasmid will be break down in, the, in its palindrome site by a restriction enzyme. 
So, ma-expose yan. This will be exposed after that portion. Then, our interested human DNA or human code, human gene, will be connected in that plasmid. After that, the recombinant DNA will be added back to our bacteria. Our bacteria will then be cultured for the creation of medicines, hormones, and vaccines. Okay, so be, ganyan. Ganyan ang nangyayari. So in production line, in manufacturing company, meron silang malaking container to grow the culture of that bacteria containing the recombinant DNA. After that, i-extract nila yung protein na gusto nating makreate by the addition of that recombinant DNA. Okay? So, that is recombinant DNA. That is genetic engineering. Ganyan yung process of genetic engineering. Then, let's now proceed to viruses. So, I have a question. What is a virus? It is, it, uh, is it a living or non-living thing? Are viruses living or non-living things? Sige nga, pakisagot. Ayan, may mga nagsagot na. Living, living daw, non-living, sabi nung iba. Hindi, hindi daw. Pwede, pwede. <laughs> Tao ba to? Ang nagpinohenyo na tayo dito. Ha? Maybe, pwede, pwede. Opo. Hindi, hindi. Opo. <laughs> non-living, not living, living. Maybe. Oo, hindi pwede. <laughs> so, micropara. I think in your micropara subject, this is discussed. Totropahin. <laughs> May totropahin at jojoain naman na dyan. <laughs> so, sa so micropara, di ba, din iskas yan? Both. Mahina po connection namin. So what are viruses? So viruses, actually this is a debate for most biologists if it, it will be considered as living or non-living. Pero the virus itself, I do not know kung ano din iskat sa inyo sa micro para, but the virus itself is a combination kasi yan of nucleic acid, di ba? And protein. Well, sometimes we call that as, as a nucleoprotein. Ayun, yes, tama, no? So, I, sa tingin ko, diniscuss sa micro para nyo yan. And viruses actually are proteins with nucleic acids. Okay, so protein siya with nucleic acids. So kapag wala pa siya sa host, no? If it does not have a host, it will not replicate. So ganun yung viruses. Kaya sometimes they call it as a living thing. Living thing siya kasi sinasabi nila is because it replicates. But when? When, with, when it has a host. But for most of the biologists, they consider, consider virus as non-living things. Okay? It is a protein with nucleic acid. Pag wala pa sa host, hindi yan mag-replicate without the host. Okay? So our viruses contain nucleic acid, and a protein coat we call as capsid. All right? This capsid is made of monomers or subunits we call as capsomeres. All right? And then some viruses contains envelopes. For example, the coronavirus. It contains actually envelopes. All right? And those envelopes have specific spikes. Iba yung coronavirus natin, it contains spikes. Iba kung drawing mo, the coronavirus, it looks like something like this. No, meron mga spike spikes. So these spikes is present in the different proteins of our, of our virus. That's why 
there are viruses we call sometimes as H1N1 virus, H1N1 flu virus, H1N5, H1N2, because it depends on the protein spikes of that particular virus. Okay? So there are a lot of viruses uh, and it is being classified based on its shape. Tigo baka nga ano eh mas alam nyo pa to kaysa sa akin. No kasi di, mas dinidiskus sa inyo itong mga to. So viruses for example the helical TMV or Ebola virus, ito yung kanyang itsura, helical, parang ganyan. Then the polio virus. Diba? Polyhedral yung virus natin for that. Ganyan to siya, itsura. Then, the coronavirus or the envelope. Okay, envelope viruses. Yan yung coronavirus natin. So, when we say coronavirus, hindi lang yan yung COVID-19, ha? Kasi ang dami, ang daming coronaviruses. Yung different strain of influenza, of flu, those are coronaviruses. Those are uh, envelope viruses. Saan mang flu yan? Avian flu, swine flu. No, saan mang flu yan? Those are all coronaviruses. Then lastly, the complex viruses. For example, a bacteriophage. If you look at it, it looks like uh, a weird thing. <laughs> Mukha siyang ano, uh, huh, Apollo 11 rocket capsule. Oh, mukha siyang punjay na may paa, di ba? Yang uh, mga bacteriophage. So, this recombinant DNA is used, di ba, for creations of vaccines in viruses. Di ba? Yung recombinant DNA. So, yung mga ginagawa, yung mga, ito, this is the modern way of creating vaccines. So, Aside from that, from creations of vaccines, ginagamit din naman yan in gene maps. For example, di ba nakikita nila kung saan nanggaling yung mga ninuno? For example, they're looking for the DNAs of migration from Africa to other countries, to other parts of our globe. Yan, Diyan nila tinitrace back in the DNA sequences. Next is the inborn errors. Diba merong mga screening na ginagawa to confirm if a child has this uh, disorder or diseases. Uh, wait lang no, nagluluko na ng internet ko. So, eh, di ba meron sa child kapag bata, in tinutusok yung Yung paa, sa paa, tapos kumukuha ng blood sample. Ano yung tawag natin doon? Na-discuss na ba sa inyo yun? We call that as newborn screening. Well, we call that as newborn screening. So, tinetest minsan doon to detect different na mga abnormalities sa bata. Okay? So, merong mga particular na pwedeng ma-detect doon. Uh, mo, sigal cell anemia, yan. Pwedeng madetect naman yan kung yung newborn screening ay merong ganoon na test. So, it's a possibility, no? So, this recombinant DNA is also used for gene therapies, di ba? Pampabata daw. Uh, Pang-solve ng mga problems on sigal cell anemia. Uh, there are also treatments that being tested right now for treatment of cancers. Uh, other na mga degenerative diseases or inborn na mga sakit and disorders no tinatry na ayusin using recombinant DNA so the applications of recombinant DNA pwedeng i-delete yung mutation for uh, of a patient pwedeng palitan yung gene niya Yung gene therapy nga na tinatawag natin, removal and replacement of particular na mga gene code sa kanyang katawan. Although medyo ano pa to, hindi pa ganun ka successful and hindi pa siya ganun nagagamit. Uh, preparations of GMOs. O, mga binanggit ko kayo ng example. Yan, application din yan ng recombinant DNA. 
So that ends our topic. Okay, that ends our topic on nucleic acids. Okay, so any questions regarding our topic? May nag-chat-chat. Masakit sa utak. Nako, mas masakit sa utak ang susunod natin na topic. <laughs> <laughs>